Greetings, church family, and thank you so much for tuning in today for our service online uh, that we come to you uh, through this medium so that we could just connect, spend some time in worship, spend some time in prayer, and also uh, spend some time in the Word of God. And today, being the first Sunday of the month, we are also going to part partake of the Lord's table towards the end of the service. So if you want to prepare yourself, uh, just get the elements ready in case you haven't. Uh, we encourage you to do that so that towards the end of the service, we'll all be able to partake in the Lord's table together. I want to especially welcome those of you who are joining us for the first time. If this is your very first time connecting with us online uh, and participating in a service like this, we want to welcome you. And uh, just a way of uh, you connecting with us and me knowing that you have been watching this service, I'd encourage you to go to our church website, which is apcwo.org. And then on the top right corner is an email icon, a mail icon, and you can click on that and you can enter your email address if you like and subscribe to our weekly emails. There's a, there are weekly emails that go out where we share with people about our current sermons, sermon notes, and also other announcements about books being released and so on and so forth. So if you'd like to be a part of, part of that mailing list, you could go to our church website, abcw.org, and just subscribe uh, to that uh, email list. And it'll also be a way for us to know that uh, you are there and you're connected uh, with us. I, um, I just want to make this announcement, you know, uh, with things that are happening here in India. Uh, we have uh, had the government announce uh, the uh, uh, this, uh, the measures of uh, phased unlocking, the easing of uh, the lockdown restrictions because of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, from June 8th, uh, the Ministry of Home Affairs has uh, permitted uh, places of worship uh, to resume their activities. However, at All People's Church in Bangalore, we uh, will not be gathering immediately uh, uh, in our congregations uh, for a couple of reasons. One is uh, many of our congregations, three out of the five congregations, actually meet on school campuses and uh, uh, educational institutions haven't yet received permission to be open as yet. And that decision will be made in sometime in July uh, by the uh, Ministry of uh, Home Affairs. So we will have to wait for that and we'll have to wait, work with the uh, educational institutions to uh, see when everything is comfortable for them as well so that we could begin to use the auditoriums on their campuses uh, for us to meet. So uh, that is one uh, uh, important point to keep in mind, as well as uh, even though uh, places of worship have been permitted to meet, there are still restrictions on large gatherings. So, you know, uh, uh, and our services, of course, there are large gatherings, uh, several hundred people come together, so we will not necessarily be able to accommodate that. So we're going to take some time to wait until those, uh, those uh, things clear up, and then we will inform you as to when we will resume our church gatherings. But until then, we will continue with these online services, most likely uh, through June and maybe part of July or maybe all of July, uh, depending on what the government announces. So I just wanted you to, to be prepared for that. And uh, definitely at the right time, we will resume our services meeting together. So until then, continue to connect with us online and through all the other resources we make available. And let's continue to stay strong. And I believe that we will come out of the season stronger uh, and better prepared uh, to impact lives for the kingdom of God. So um, we have a lot to look forward to in the days to come. I uh, also want to thank all those who've been, you know, helping us in these online services. Uh, our media team has been doing a lot of work, as uh, many of you are aware. Uh, just, just putting uh, all each week services together, not only the main service, but also the uh, kids service. Both are online. And so our media team has been really working hard. Our IT team uh, providing all the support, um, online support that 
that is required to bring these services to you. So I want to thank all of them and all our church staff have been working from home. And, uh, you know, we've been doing a lot of work in terms of preparing for our Bible college resources and materials and all of that. So a lot of work has been happening be uh, behind the scenes. And I want to thank our uh, media team, our IT team, our entire church staff, all our pastors. And uh, you, you get to see me speaking to you every Sunday. Uh, but really, we have a pastoral team. Uh, they're doing a lot of work reaching out to the church community, to believers, uh, supporting them, encouraging them. So I want to thank our pastoral team. Now, uh, starting next Sunday, uh, we're going to have some of our other pastors also minister in our online services. Uh, we couldn't do that uh, because, you know, the, uh, because of the lockdown was strict. We couldn't actually come together to do the recordings. Uh, we were just doing it from home. Uh, but with the easing of the restrictions, we'll be able to do some recordings from our church office as well. And the next Sunday, Pastor Jill Kumar will be ministering and then we'll have Pastor Nancy ministering uh, in, in the coming weeks. And, and so we'll have more of them uh, being involved in these online services. Um, I also want to take a, take a moment to especially thank uh, the, the, the team, the people who've been working and putting together the kids online service. Uh, you know, in March 15th, when we moved our services online, a couple of Sundays, we didn't have anything for the children. Uh, we had a few comments by parents saying, you know, we'd love to have something for the children. And, you know, in just a matter of four days, our uh, kids online service was up and running from idea to actual ex execution and release. Within four days, we put together our very first kids online service and, uh, we are up and running and we've been doing that every every Sunday since then. Uh, I want to thank all the children who've been part of these services. Uh, you know, it's been great to see children participate. Uh, I know it's really a different thing, you know, standing in front of the camera and recording and doing all of that. Uh, we've just been so encouraged by the participation of the children. A special thanks to all the parents, uh, because without the help of the parents, uh, we would, of course, not be able to have the children participate uh, in the online services. So thank you, parents, for uh, encouraging, encouraging your children and helping them uh, be a part of the online services. Uh, we really uh, encourage you to keep doing that you know, as long as we have these online kids' online services running. Uh, I want to also thank very especially the core team. So, you know, when we got this online service together, uh, what we did was to get a core team uh, together. And the core team has been, you know, actually behind the whole uh, uh, online service. And uh, so uh, I was guiding the core team for a while and then handed that off to uh, uh, Swarnima, who's actually our kids online service coordinator. So she's been handling the, you know, just coordinating everything. And then we have others in the core team, uh, Manuela Solomon, uh, Betsy Avinash, uh, Sarita Steven, uh, Sharon, Susanna, uh, Sharon Libina, uh, uh, Jennifer Aser, uh, Sandhya Raj, and Sarah Jacob. So these people are in the core team. Uh, they're, you know, really putting every service, every week's service together, uh, reaching out to the children, reaching out to the parents and getting other people to participate. They're really doing uh, the work. And so I want to really especially thank them for it. And they're going to continue doing this hopefully through June, July. And uh, we'll see what happens in August and uh, thereafter. But uh, just a special thanks uh, to this core team. Uh, we're going to uh, take a moment now to do our declaration and after that we're going to get into God's Word. Hey, good morning church family. We're just so glad that you could join us online. A special welcome to those of you who are joining us for the very first time. Uh, my name is Sam and I just want to share a short word of encouragement before we make our declaration together. It's from Mark chapter 4 verses 22 onwards. It's a very familiar passage of scripture, you know, where Jesus is on a boat with his disciples uh, crossing over to the other side and suddenly there's a storm that erupts and the disciples are overwhelmed they're scared and they go up to Jesus for help and notice Jesus's response he goes straight to the storm and he says peace be still and immediately there is great calm you know it gives us a window into how Jesus responded to overwhelming situations in fact Jesus gave us the blueprint as disciples from Mark chapter 11 verse 23 to 24 it says for assuredly I say to you whoever says to this mountain be removed and be cast out into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that those things he says will be done he will have whatever he says you know 
it's just so encouraging as believers that Jesus has given us this mandate to speak our faith in overwhelming situations. And on that note, I would like you guys to um, join with me as we make our declaration together. The words will come up on the screen. Let's declare together. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I am saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I am a minister of God, a servant of Christ and a channel of his blessing to many people. I receive his word. I believe his word and I live by his word. Christ is my master and to him I am in absolute surrender. I present myself as a new wineskin to receive the new wine and fresh oil being poured out on me. God releases new things and a new work of his spirit in me and through me. In Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us in that declaration as we just uh, take time to uh, declare what God has said about us and uh, uh, you know, affirm that his word concerning us is truth. Now, over the last five weeks, we've been studying about the mighty name of Jesus. And today, uh, in the sixth sermon in the series, this will be the concluding sermon on the mighty name of Jesus. And I trust that this entire series has been a, 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 an encouragement to you. It's been building you up in your understanding of the name of Jesus and also in your uh, knowing how to use that name, when to use that name and how to minister to people in the authority of that name. Now, if you have not yet downloaded the PDF book on the mighty name of Jesus, I request you to go to our church website, apcw.org slash books, download the PDF. The PDF has a lot more than what we have been covering in our Sunday sermons. So I encourage you to please read that. And also there are reflection questions that are given uh, at uh, certain points through the book uh, for you to reflect, uh, think about and see uh, and, you know, examine your own understanding of uh, this truth and the revelation that's been brought to you uh, in the chapter. So please take some time to do that. And also one more thing, we have an online poll that we are doing just to get your feedback, to give you an opportunity to tell us how this series has uh, impacted your life. And that's on our YouTube channel. So if you go, if you are watching right now on YouTube or if you're watching elsewhere, you can go uh, to our YouTube channel, which is uh, youtube.com slash allpeoplesearchbangalore. Uh, if you go to our YouTube channel, you'll have a tab that says community. So if you click or tap on the tab, community tab, there's just one single question with five options. Uh, take some time to select your option and that gives us feedback on how this series has been helping you. So if you take a moment to do that, either after service, uh, that would be of value to us just to know uh, how this uh, series has been uh, helping you. So what we've been doing in, in, in this entire series is we began, first of all, by uh, looking at the person uh, behind the name. The Bible tells us that the name of Jesus is a powerful name. And it's powerful because of the person who's standing behind that name. And then we uh, did a little survey of the Old Testament to understand the fact that even in the Old Testament, people connected with God and who he is uh, by engaging with his name in their everyday lives. And when to the mention of his name, they had God coming in on the scene in their everyday lives, so to speak, and, and do things for them. And so we uh, learned several uh, things and gained a lot of insight from the Old Testament uh, about the use of the name of the Lord. And then we came into the, the New Testament where Jesus uh, tells us and authorizes us to make use of his name. Really, uh, he's giving us the power of attorney, the right to use his name. And, and, and we examine what the New Testament tells us uh, uh, as a significance of the believer using the name of Jesus. That when we use his name, we are representing him 
We are standing in his place to do what he would do if he were there and he himself is present there with every believer who uses his name, standing in his name to do the very things uh, he would do. And then we started just you know, going through the New Testament, looking at the various ways in which we could use the name of Jesus, starting from the fact that we are saved uh, through his name. We have uh, received forgiveness. We receive eternal life. There is salvation in that name. And then we went through several things. We pray, we praise, we worship, uh, we honor one another in the name of the Lord. We gather together in the name of Jesus. Uh, then last Sunday, we also talked about the ministry aspect. That when we minister, we minister in his name. We preach, we teach, we minister healing, we minister deliverance. Uh, we uh, see miracles all in that name. It is in that name and he has authorized us to use that name, use his name to do those very things. And so uh, we saw uh, all of that. So today we're going to bring this to a close and look at some of the other aspects uh, uh, that are related to the life of the believer in the use of the name of Jesus. And we're going to do that and we'll wrap the series up. But remember, just because we bring a series to a close does not mean uh, we put the truth behind us. No, it means we're going to continue walking in this truth and growing in it so that we can uh, continue uh, receiving more understanding and revelation and see its use in our everyday lives. So in this, as we get ready to conclude, we are just going to look at a few more things that Jesus said concerning his name and concerning the disciples' use of his name. First of all, uh, Jesus, I'm in chapter 26 in the book. So if you would like to go to chapter 26, I will pick up from there. Jesus said that we will be persecuted for his name's sake. So we've uh, seen all the wonderful things that happen, but here's something more that comes along with the use of that name. He said, you'll be persecuted for his name's sake. And I'll just read out a few of the scriptures uh, in relation to that. In Matthew 10, verse 22, Jesus said, And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. He said, you know, people are going to hate you for one reason, because you bear my name, because you carry my name, uh, because you're representing me, uh, because you're doing what I would do. Uh, you are revealing me to the world. You're bearing my name. Because of that, he said, you'll be hated, but you've got to endure to the end. Don't quit just because you're being persecuted for my name's sake. In Acts 5, verses 40 to 42, uh, we see one incident in the early church. And of course, uh, there are many incidents in the early church where uh, believers or disciples were persecuted for the name of Jesus Christ. But we will just read one uh, in Acts 5, verses 40 to 42. It says, and they agreed with him. And when they called for the apostles, it's talking about the religious leaders, when they, the religious leaders had called for the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. So they beat them up. And they commanded them not to preach in the name of Jesus. But what did the disciples do? They counted it worthy to suffer shame for his name. You know, they look considered it as an honor to have to suffer like this for the sake of that name. And this is what I want to challenge you and me with. You know, in today's world, um, maybe uh, you and I, when we are persecuted for the name of Jesus, People are not necessarily going to come and beat us up. Now, that happens in some instances. But many times the persecution that you and I would face uh, would be in other ways. People would uh, isolate us, would uh, mock us, would laugh at us, would verbally attack us. You know, the, the, the attacks may be in a different form and not always necessarily be a physical attack. But regardless of how the attack comes, we need to have the same understanding as the apostles that it's an honor to suffer shame for his name. It's an honor to be persecuted because you bear the name of Jesus Christ. So whether you're a student in school or in college or maybe among your friends or maybe in, uh, in your workplace, 
at. Don't be ashamed to bear the name. And, uh, you know, if you're persecuted, if you're mocked at, if you're laughed at, uh, if people speak uh, evil of you, just because you stand up for the name, they know that you are a believer in Jesus Christ. You know, count it an honor that you could do this, this little thing for the sake of the one who gave his life for you and me. Uh, connected to that, this is in chapter 27, uh, Jesus also mentioned that we will be invited to sacrifice for his name's sake. Let me read a few scriptures in, in Matthew 19, 21. Jesus said, and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. So he's saying, you know, uh, depending on, on, on the call of God on our lives, uh, different ones of us uh, will have to give up, will have to sacrifice uh, different things on this earth for the sake of his name. Now, the sacrifice each one of us are called, are diff called to make are different. We don't have to copy somebody else. You and I have to obey God and do what God has called us to do. But in his call on our lives, we there is sacrifice involved. We'll have to give up certain things or take on certain things uh, because of his name's sake. You know, and Jesus mentioned like in the scripture that we read, we may have to give up earthly relationships, earthly possessions, uh, privileges, uh, things that are all are okay to have, but in your case, you may need to give it up in order to pursue Jesus and to do what he has called you to do for his name's sake. You know, and uh, that's an honor to be able to sacrifice for his name's sake. And Jesus promised, he said, you will receive a hundredfold in this life. In other words, whatever we give up for the sake of his kingdom, God is no man's debtor. He will not be a debtor to anybody. He will give us a hundredfold back. He will give to us more than what money can buy. So it doesn't mean if you know if you give a hundred rupees, you'll necessarily you know get a hundred times as much as that. I mean, it could come back in cash, or it could come out come back to you in some other way uh, that God will you pour back into your life because you have sacrificed for his kingdom. He will take care of you and he will make sure you receive a hundredfold now in this life. And he said, and in the life to come, eternal life. So uh, when we sacrifice, remember, we are offering it up to God. We are doing it willingly and God will reward us in this life in ways that we could never imagine. He will give to us more than what money can buy. He'll give to us more than what we have sacrificed for the sake of his kingdom. He is sure to take care of us in this life. So we do that joyfully for his name's sake. We take risks. We sacrifice for his name's sake. In chapter 28, uh, not only do we are not only uh, are we willing to bear persecution for his name or sacrifice for his name in chapter 28, uh, we are also called to bear that name in a very honorable way, to carry the name of Jesus in a way that is worthy of us having that name on our lives. Uh, in uh, uh, Acts chapter 9 and verse 15, uh, the Lord speaking about the uh, Saul at that time, who later on became the apostle Paul, uh, he says, the Lord said, go for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles kings and the children of Israel. So he's saying this man has been picked up to bear my name. That means he's going to go before the kings. He's going to be, go before Gentiles. He's going to go before uh, the Jewish people as well. And he'll carry my name as he goes before them. Now, that just isn't specifically for, the, for Saul or the Apostle Paul, but that also applies to you and me as believers. Look at the uh, for instance, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 12, the Apostle Paul is writing to believers and he says this, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. So it says, then may the name of the Lord be glorified in your life. You're bearing his name and you live in such a way that his name is glorified. His name is honored. His name is magnified. Or in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19, uh, the scripture says that everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. If you are carrying that name, you're bearing that name, it says, you know, 
depart from sin. Don't live in sin because you're bearing that name. Live a life that is worthy of that name. So be ready to stand up in the midst of persecution. Uh, be willing to make sacrifice in his name uh, and carry his name in a worthy manner. Live a life that is worthy of of that name. Uh, just two more things here. In chapter 29, we also find that uh, in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul uh, would correct people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Paul, as you understand, as we understand, was a spiritual leader and his apostle, and he planted many churches and he nurtured many people uh, in the faith. And because of his spiritual standing, and of course, because of his spiritual responsibility, there were times that he had to correct the people of God, God's people, tell them what is right, what's wrong, what they should do, what they shouldn't do. Uh, and sometimes he would instruct them. Sometimes he would command them. That means demand a certain action from them. And you find in his writings that Paul did it in the name of the Lord Jesus. That means he's saying, look, when I admonish you, uh, when I'm instructing you, uh, when I'm correcting you, I'm doing it in his name. I'm doing it on uh, representing Jesus on his behalf to teach you, guide you, direct you, and instruct you in a way that will honor the Lord. Uh, and we'll just read one or two references on this and just see how Paul uses the name of Jesus in order to instruct the people of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10, he says, Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Notice how he's saying, I'm pleading with you, brethren, in Jesus' name. You know, that means I'm doing this on his behalf. I'm doing this as his servant, as his representative. I want you all to be together. I want you to be of one mind. I want you to be united and not have any divisions and strife amongst you. So, you know, he's admonishing God's people in the name of Jesus. And there are times when you and I will have to do that. When we lovingly speak to each other, uh, to correct one another, to, you know, to instruct and to guide, we do it in Jesus' name, knowing that that's what the Lord would want in that situation as his representative. And so finally, in, in closing in chapter 30, uh, I just, just close with the reminder that the name of Jesus is forever. You know, this name is never going to fade away. If you look at history, uh, there have been uh, many people who've lived and who've left their mark on history. And, uh, you know, when we go through history books, we see their names. But overall, their names are forgotten. Names fade away. Uh, the memory, their memories fade away. In some way, of course, we try to keep rem their remembrance. But the name of Jesus is a name that will endure forever. And I want to close with those scriptures that we've read uh, in Philippians chapter 2, uh, verses 9 through 11. Those powerful scriptures. It says, Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven, of those on earth, and of those under the earth that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So that's that name that we worship, we honor, that we stand up for, we bear, we carry. Uh, we are not ashamed uh, to have that name on our lives and be counted an honor if we are persecuted or if we have to sacrifice for the sake of that name. That name will endure forever. The power of that name will never diminish. The glory of that name will never fade away. What an honor it is that we could bear that name and we could speak that name during our time here on this earth. We are going to prepare ourselves to partake of the Lord's table. So I want to encourage you to uh, get your elements ready. Uh, I'm going to uh, step aside. The worship team will lead us in a song. And uh, once uh, we take a few moments just to worship God uh, through song, I will come back. And then we're going to just partake of the Lord's table and uh, just honor Jesus and give him praise. Give him thanks. I, I believe in Jesus. I believe he is the son of God. I believe he died and rose again 
I believe he paid for us all oh, And I believe he is your Thank you, worship team, for leading us in that song. Uh, we are going to partake of the elements together. And if you are doing it by yourself, that's wonderful. Uh, if you're joining together in the spirit with this whole body, uh, if you are together with your family, uh, then the head of the household, uh, I just want you uh, to lay hands on the elements and we'll pray, we'll consecrate these elements. So there's nothing magical about these things. They are just you know, earthly elements that we're going to partake of, uh, but they represent to us the body and the blood of Jesus. They uh, symbolize what Christ did for us on the cross. And they are uh, elements that represent our covenant with God, that we are in covenant with Almighty God. And God is faithful. He is watching over his covenant. He will make his covenant good in our lives. And as part of his covenant, he's promised to heal. He's promised to deliver. He's promised to provide. He's promised to answer our prayers. So as we partake of these elements, say, God, I'm in covenant with you. You are my God. And this is my need. I receive it. Or you may just want to thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the cross. Thank you for bearing my sins on the cross. Thank you for carrying away all the penalty of sin, the consequences of sin, and washing me with your blood and bringing me into your kingdom. Maybe that's what you want to do as you partake of these elements. Maybe you have you need, need healing as you partake of these elements. That's your prayer. Lord, I receive healing by the stripes of Jesus. I'm healed. Maybe you need provision in your life. Lord, as I partake of these elements, I ask you on the basis of the covenant, meet my need. You know, so each one of us, 
can make our prayer to the Lord as we partake of these elements and receive the blessing that this, uh, this brings into our lives. So let's pray, consecrate these elements, and then we'll partake together. And then I want you to make your prayer to God based on the covenant that you have with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we sanctify, we consecrate these earthly elements that represent to us the body and the blood of Jesus and what Jesus Christ has completed for us on the cross. And Father, we pray that as we partake of these elements, the full blessing of the cross of Jesus be administered to each of us. We declare that because of the cross, our sins are forgiven, our bodies are healed, we have shalom, total well-being in our lives. We are in covenant with God. Satan and his demons lie crushed underneath our feet. We have victory over every evil work of the enemy because of our covenant with God and because of the cross of Jesus. And we receive this blessing. Father, I pray that as we partake, that you will meet the needs of people. That bodies be healed. That provisions come into the lives of people. Let situations be turned around. Let prayers be answered. Thank you in Jesus' name. The Lord Jesus said, take, eat. This is my body that's given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread together. The Lord Jesus said, This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. We declare the power of the blood of Jesus over our lives. The blood has cleansed us, redeemed us, delivered us, and we overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Let's partake of the cup together, knowing what the blood of Jesus has done for us. Let's do this together. Father, in Jesus' name, I declare the full blessings of the cross of Jesus into the lives of each one listening and watching. I declare every yoke of the enemy broken, every oppression of the enemy broken off of their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the yoke of sickness, disease, and infirmity be broken. Let provision come to take care of their needs. Let there be the abundant supply of God coming into their lives. And be glorified in each of our lives. Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the service today. Next Sunday, as I mentioned, Pastor Jay Kumar Isaiah will be ministering to us online. And also, we'd love to hear from you. We have been receiving testimonies. Thank you for that. Pastor Jay Kumar will share some of those testimonies next week. And uh, if, some, you know, if you want to share a testimony of how your life has been impacted through this service or through the sermon series, send us an email to testimony at apcw.org so that we could hear from you and celebrate God's goodness with you. So until next time, continue strong in Jesus. Remember, we love you. The Lord loves you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.